Hi guys and girls, Jeremy here, and I wanted to show you a mass programming widget that I made. Um, this is an Arduino Uno, of course, and if you want to program a new 328 chip, uh, if you order just a raw chip from Atmel, uh, what you're going to have to do is take the chip out uh, carefully with a screwdriver here. So let's let's do this. Get that guy up a little bit, and then you come down here, and then you kind of work this chip out, and it comes out. I've taken it out enough of them out. And then you can get the chip, put it aside, get the new one. It's actually the exact same one, but for video purposes, we'll call it the new one. And then go ahead and push it in there. And it takes a little bit of decent amount of pressure to get it in there. And so um, I have a whole bunch of these I have to program for some kits that I'm making. So uh, the answer is a ZIF socket. So we'll show you that uh, just a little bit here. And uh, just a quick side note, I'd like to say happy birthday to my daughter, Anna who was born today, this morning. Uh, I'm a new dad. I'm currently at the hospital. That's why the background looks weird. And so let's show you what I made as far as the zip socket goes. Hi guys, this is my target board here. Um, I have um, a 328 in a zip socket and the appropriate crystals and caps and the reset pin. Uh, I just pulled out an FTDI uh, breakout board from the six pin header here. That's what that's for. And then I simply have a white LED um, off of pin 3, and then an RGB LED off of pins um, 9, 10, and 11. And I'll show you what those are for um, in, in a minute here. So uh, if I take this chip, you can see how easy this comes in and out of this zip socket. So it, it just floats in there uh, very, very easily until you take this pin and clamp that down, and then it becomes tight in there, so it won't go anywhere. Uh, if you notice, I just flipped this switch. Uh, the power is on, but I took this chip out. Uh, it was okay because this kills the power to the chip. If I turn this back on, um, you can see that it pretty much does nothing. So, uh, if I go to my software and I click burn bootloader through um, USB Tiny, um, it'll go ahead and do that. You can see the LEDs are flashing. Uh, this is a yellow LED is hooked to pin 13, just like an um, Arduino. And then this is hooked up to 9, 10, 11. Uh, and the IS, ICSP interface uses pins 11, 12, and 13. So uh, this is hooked up to pin 11, this is hooked up to pin 13, and they're both flashing as you can see. All right, uh, looks like that finished up and we are blinking. So we have a Arduino bootloader successfully dumped in that 328 here. So now if we take our FTDI cable and we plug that in, like this, now we can dump some code in here. Uh, we can do this with that cable plugged in. I took it out for the kind of video. I'm on a uh, just a sink counter here at the in the hospital here, so my studio setup is not less than optimal, I'll put it that way. So if we dump some code in here, um, I'll go ahead and program the code. And then for this particular application, uh, this board has some LED control here, so uh, when it boots up, it does a quick color cycle, and so I know that the firmware is in there happily. Once that gets done, I can say OK. I'll shut the power off so it turns green. I can flip my ZIF lever up, take the chip out, grab a new chip theoretically, um, go ahead and, and pop it in here, and then just put this down. And then once I get that done, put the power back on, and then do the whole process over again.